Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to today's video in which I'm going to talk and give my thoughts on Centurion, which is the new archetype that's coming to the TCG. Um, this archetype has been around in the OCG for a little bit now, and so uh, we're finally getting access to the cards in Valiant Smashers, which is the latest set. Um, and I kind of want to talk about this archetype because it's something new, um, and its mechanics are very different than what we've historically seen, okay? Now, the question that we're going to try to figure out and talk about today is whether or not this archetype is going to perform in the TCG. Um, let me give you a quick rundown um, of what the deck accomplishes um, and um, what the deck kind of looks like. So I'm going to start off actually showing a quick combo video um, with the archetype. And essentially what the deck aims to do is it tries to clammy lock your opponent and basically every card every centurion card in the deck is a one card combo that allows you to do that okay so here we're going to normal summon primera primera is going to grab you set up centurion centurion's effect is going to send a random card from your hands to the graveyard in order to place judea in the spell and trap zone judea can then special summon itself during the main phase um uh, when it's treated as a continuous trap and then you can optional effect to increase this level by four we're then going to activate today's effect to place itself back in the spell and trap zone and then place a centurion monster from your deck into the spell and trap zone um, and we're going to place emmet and then we're going to use emmet's effect to summon itself from the spell and trap zone and here we're going to make um legatia and then draw a card right so the effect allows you to draw a card and then during the end phase you will use this effect to place up a centurion monster from your hand or grave back into the spell and trap zone as a continuous trap right so um, on your opponent's turn, what you hope to accomplish is to activate Judea and Premier to summon themselves because they're continuous traps um, uh, during the main phase. And during the main phase, while they're treated as continuous traps, you can summon those cards from the spell and trap zone, right? Your uh, Centurion Field Spell allows you to uh, synchro summon using uh, monsters you control as a material, um, including at least one Centurion monster, uh, whenever a monster is special summoned. So on your opponent's turn, you're able to summon these cards from the spell and trap zone. Um, and then essentially uh, Synchro Summon an 8 and a 4 into a Crimson Dragon. And then use Crimson Dragon to target the Legatia to summon a um, King Calamity, right? Now, this might seem really strong on paper, but it has a lot of weaknesses. The deck kind of functions very similar to Prank Kids, but the issue that this deck has is that it loses to way more stuff than Prank Kids. Um, a normal a Veiler or an Impermanence on Primera is very, very strong. Um, it can lose to Ogre on the Centurion monsters. It can lose to Cosmic Cyclone on the Field spell to prevent the Calamity from coming out. The Legatia doesn't actually do anything um, on the board itself. Uh, essentially, what you'll find is that the deck, even though it can do a lot with one card, also loses to a lot with one card. And if you look at YCS Richmond, a lot of people were on hand traps, right? Cards like Valor, Impermanence, Ash really came into the format. Now, um, you might be wondering, um, what are my thoughts? Well, just looking and reading at these cards, I think the ability to play, um, you know, uh, 13 one card starters is very, very powerful. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like this deck, what it's missing is a, a supplementary engine that can really push it to the next level. Um, I think the issue of the deck is the fact that right now, off of one card, it doesn't do enough um, with the amount of non-engine in the format. Like, there's almost no advantage. Um, like, uh, because even if you stop your opponent, let's say you hand trap your opponent because this deck can play a lot of non-engine. If, if your opponent has just one interruption and one non-engine, um, they'll stop you back and then your opponent next turn will play again. And so um, I think that's kind of like the issue where like I feel like the deck is very weak in terms of its engine. But you almost need to combine it with something else that will push it to the next level. Right? Um, and so I, that's kind of like kind of the issue pretty much with this archetype. And I think that's what I've been trying to struggle with in terms of what engine can you supplement this with? to make it like way stronger um so if we look at the ocg uh some of the things that they played were cards like the horus cards right 
Um, and the main reason why they played the horse cards is like they're basically free level eight monsters. Um, they can uh, they're free level eight monsters, so they work really well with Primera to make you the Synchro Twelve. Um, and worst case, you can overlay for Zombie Vampire and then try to get access to the Centron engine that way. Um, but I don't know if in this format if you want to necessarily blind mill four cards. And then right now, this, the uh, the benefit of the Centurion cards is that they they do, like if you look at the combo, it only took four summons, so you actually don't actually play into Nib at all. But the other the funny part is when you add more engine into this deck, you also make it lose to more cards. Um, a good example is that if you notice, this deck only searches once on your turn, so Droll doesn't actually do anything to this deck. So that's a huge benefit, right? So if a lot of people play Droll and Lockbird, and you're playing Pure Centurion. Drone Lockbird doesn't actually do anything. Um, and Nib also doesn't really do anything because um, this all of this is performed under five, like it's uh, four summons. So it's under the threshold of Nibru. Uh, but the funny part is, as you make your deck play through more hand traps like the Veilers, the Imperms, the Ashes, you end up losing to other cards. And I think the, the thing is, you don't really know what non engine people were playing. Because in this type of format, it's very diverse. People kind of just play whatever they feel like playing, um, and that's why, like, I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't. I personally don't think Centurion will do as well um, uh, in in the TCG because of how diverse the format is. Um, but I do think that the benefit of the deck is the ability to play like 20 something non-engine cards, um, unless someone figures out like a. It's good supplementary engine that can be complemented with the Centurion cards, then maybe it could be it could get there. Like I already started looking at some of the stuff you could play. Like for example, uh, if you add in like Horus cards to the deck, right? You can see right here you can add in like Horus cards to your deck, um, and then you have cards like right here. There's already 12 hand traps here. You have Horus cards. Um, you still need to fill the deck with nine more cards after the fact. Um, which is a lot. Um, but what cards can you add to make the deck a little bit better, right? One of the things that I think kind of helps maybe is I think super he super heavy samurai. If you guys remember this engine, uh, one of the things you could do is like play like triple bike, um, triple Wakashi. Uh, you can play the one uh, ben Big Benkei. Uh, and then you, I believe you could also play the one so Gaia. And then this engine is kind of nice because it lets you get access to a card called Flame Banshee, right? And then Flame Banshee is a uh, level four generic Xyz that can add, take a pyro and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. Well, Trudea, one of the main starters in the archetype, is actually a pyro monster, right? In the OCG, they have a card called Bonfire that adds Trudea. But because we don't have Bonfire in the TCG yet until January or February, um, which is going to be a while from now, um, I think like you probably would have to play a Super Heavy Engine, I think, just to make the deck a little bit more consistent because 13 starters and 40 cards is actually not that much um, in comparison to, um, I guess, like, you know, in, in, in the, what do you call it, in comparison to what we've seen with like all the, like, the huge increase of the power level of cards. Um, but yeah, like basically I think like the super heavy cards could be played with them. You can play the Horus cards with the super heavy cards. Um, you don't really, like, you would obviously have to cut impermanence for like maybe ghost mourner, uh, because you can't have spells and traps. Um, uh, but yeah, that's kind of like where I'm kind of at. The deck also has another big benefit that I think people, uh, might quickly realize is that these are pyro monsters. These are spell casters. These are machines. It can play a very forbidden card, which is there can only be one. Another, like, right? So these are some of the pros. These are some of the cons with the deck, right? Like I said, the con is that it dies to literally your opponent breathing on you. But some of the pros are like, it can play there can only be one. Uh, it has a lot of flex spots. So it almost seems like because of how much flex spots it has, that is, it's almost a deck that should be played with other engines, almost. Um, you could try to play it peer. But I think like you would have to like main deck cross out. You would have to main deck like call by um, because you need to really push your combo through because right now it's very, very weak. Um, 
But so those are kind of like the approaches in terms of like where you would take it. And I'm kind of curious to see where um, people would take this, uh, take this deck, um, and what approach people will take. Uh, personally, I'm leaning towards a super heavy version of Centurion. And if you're interested in seeing that profile, let me know in the comment section below. Um, and, and I'll try to build it and then maybe take it to locals or something. Maybe I can stream it. But that's kind of like where I'm at with Centurion cards. I think they're not bad, but they don't scream like super broken to me at the moment. And that might change as I test more and more of the format. Uh, but overall, um, I'm not really big a big fan of like super, like, you know, of King Clamming your opponent. At the moment, um... Uh, I'll wait for to see you guys um, takes and, and what do you think about the the, the uh, Centurion cards. But that's kind of like the preview of just my overall initial thoughts of the archetype. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below what, what do you what do you guys would do with this deck, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.